Let me introduce the third generation of uh, Saki 3D AOI. The current 3D machine is on the market uh, since 2012. This is the brand new system uh, which brings um, a lot of benefits uh, for the new users. The brand new gantry uh, can accommodate uh, three versions, starting from dual lane, single lane uh, for L size and the XXL size version. The, the gantry is driven by the ball screw, um, despite of the fact that the previous generation was driven by linear motors. And the programmable projectors uh, were optimized um, in a way that we changed the uh, projection angle in order to uh, eliminate the secondary reflections and the, and the homogeneity was improved. Therefore, the height reconstruction is much more reliable compared to the current generation. One of the very big changes is also to the lighting system. We included the coaxial top lighting for shadow-free image, which is uh, helping in the difficult areas with a high density of mounting. And also the lighting ring for side and low light uh, was improved in order to get a seamless uh, image without any shadowing. We have succeeded to speed up the machine by 20% compared to current generation. Let me show you how is the scanning process coming. So, the reconstruction is uh, done in a parallel with the scanning. It means when we scan the first field of view, the previous field of view is already uh, reconstructed. Uh, this reconstruction is running on a graphical processing unit, which is built in the PC. After the reconstruction, uh, the algorithm of the warpage compensation uh, takes the place and it flattens the PCB in order to eliminate all of the warpage which happens in the reflow oven or during the soldering, other soldering process. The using of the machine uh, is very simple. Let me show you how we can program uh, the machine. As an example, we'll select a uh, fine pitch uh, QFP and we will design the shape and the recipe library. The shape library is a geometry of the package and the recipe library deploys the inspection step in there. All right, so first we have to define the shape library. The shape, shape library um, can be selected from the uh, golden library, which is supplied with the system. So the shape library includes more than 900 packages, uh, which are pre-programmed uh, for you. You can select it manually, or you can use assistance. So I just need to select the type of the package and the system will find the best fit of the shape library to my component. So as you see, I, uh, the system suggested me six variants of this component. In a case that I don't have this um, information in my golden library, it's some kind of odd shaped component, I can use a shape wizard which helps me and guiding through the development of the geometry of the package. So let me start a shape uh, wizard. As you can see, the shape wizard um, starts to analyze the image and the height information and suggest me what is the body size. As you can see, this is correct for this component and I just follow to the next step. After we fix the body size, there is a identification of what's going on around the component. You see that the system identified that there are lead arrays on four sides of this component. Therefore, the system suggests it is a QFP component. Let's agree on that. And then the system starts to identify how many leads do I have on every side and what is the pitch of the leads. Um, on the component. The only thing what I have to set is the edge of the lead or edge of the tip. That's it. Uh, we prepared a, a geometry uh, for QFP48 which was suggested by the system. So uh, we can continue in deploying the recipe. In the recipe, 
I prepare a new recipe. The geometry is already deployed from the shape, which I showed you a couple of minutes ago. And I can use a tool called Recipe Wizard. In Recipe Wizard, there are uh, there are there is a list of um, the templates which I can use for automated generation of the recipe. It means of the inspection steps. In this case, I will generate a body, leads, and bridge elements. And for every of those elements, I deploy the three steps for body as checking the position, presence, absence, including the coplanarity and a polarity. For lead, I'll check the soldering, and for bridging, I'll check the bridge. Now we are in the menu of the, we started, we started to program the first inspection step. As you can see, I see the whole map, uh, I, the, the height map is uh, displayed. And uh, by the black color, you can see the PCB surface. Once the brightness gets higher, uh, we see the higher object. So in my task is to find out the height where the body is visualized without any interference of the other objects, like it is. For the coplanarity, I use an algorithm called Fine Plane, which shows me uh, the area and measures the distance between the PCB level and the component surface. Not only the height, but also the inclination. It means the angle between the PCB and the component. For the polarity, I can decide whether I will use a 3D approach or 2D approach. On a 3D approach, we can, we can use on this component a press polarity mark. You can see the darker, uh, darker circle, uh, which means that there is a little bit lower or deeper object on the polarity mark. So only what I need to do is to check the, to, to change the position. As you can see, I generated all three steps for my body. So now we will continue with the leads. For the leads, I define the expected position of the lead and the maximum and minimum height of the lead which I expect. And finally, bridging. The bridging I can do in 3D or in 2D. If I select 2D approach, uh, I can detect uh, very tiny bridges as a, like, a, like a hairy bridge, which gives us a lot of advantages. So we finalized all of the steps to prepare the library for QFP48 uh, and we covered the position, we covered the average height and inclination of the package and the polarity. At the same time, we have the inspection of the leads, including the height measurement. And this algorithm tries to classify the joint and the lead in one of those categories. Finally, the bridging inspection.